Hello and welcome to the YouTube home of the Reptile Goth. As always, I am Morgan. Today our topic is going to be planning a long camping trip. Quick disclaimer, the following words are essentially my opinions. I am in no way an expert and what worked for me may not work for you. So remember to continue doing your research and do what works best for you. Today we're going to define a long camping trip as one that extends for more than four days. So the planning involved is gonna be a little bit more in depth than just grabbing your gear and hanging out at your favorite campground for the weekend. In order to construct an easy set of steps that anybody can follow and use as a base for their planning, I am going to use the process of planning my 10 day Yosemite trip from last year as the model. Step one is the easiest step in the planning process. This is the step where you just get the idea to go. It can come from anywhere. My particular idea for my Yosemite trip came from memories of spending a week in the late summer in the Sierras with my dad before school started. But for some people, it comes from conversation, random articles that might pop up on the internet, a documentary, books, literally anywhere. You just need to get the idea that will inspire you to pack up and go hang out in the wilderness for a while. Once you have your idea and your destination is just calling you and you can no longer ignore that itch to get out and go, you need to sit down and do some research. This might seem a little mundane for any of you who are not a weird nerd like me that can spend hours researching and not even realize that an entire day has passed, but it is important and it will keep you safe. This research that you're gonna do is gonna set the framework for the rest of your trip planning process. And I suggest the first thing you should look at is going to be the weather patterns for the area you intend to visit and pinpoint exactly the best time of year for you to visit because that's also going to determine any specialized gear you need to bring. After all, hiking in snow and ice is gonna be a lot different than hiking in extreme heat. Once you know what weather to expect, you're gonna to wanna to look at the must-see sites and pick the activities that you just can't miss. Now, try not to rule anything out just because it might be a little crowded if you're in peak season, since a lot of the times, even stopping for a few minutes to take in that view is worth the crowd. Or those locations are a hub for hiking trails, meaning they're either a good place to leave your car for the day while you're out exploring the wilderness, or a good place to stop for lunch so that you still have the energy to complete your hike. <laughs> Once you have your must-do activities picked, you're gonna wanna make sure you go back, look at the mileage for the hikes, the elevation gains and losses to expect, any recommended gear to take with you on those, and any permits you might need. And if you do need permits, how to obtain them. For example, I hiked all the way to the top of Half Dome. In order to do that, I had to get permits to use the cables. And to get those cables, I had to enter a lottery. Now, a lot of permits don't require that, but you don't wanna get stuck in a really long line at a ranger station or wilderness center. It's just not gonna be fun and it's gonna put your start time way back. Once you have your permits, once you know what you need on these hikes, you wanna plan backups because Mother Nature's unpredictable, and sometimes you just don't get to do the activities you have planned. My entire Yosemite trip had to be replanned on the fly because we couldn't access anything off of Tioga Road since the High Sierras still had a fairly deep snowpack for most of the time we were there. But we had backups, so it wasn't a big deal. We just changed our plans for the day. Once you have your activities and backups all listed out, make an itinerary. 
Make sure you can fit everything you want to do in the time period that you have wherever you're going. This way, you know where you're going to be on each day and you have an emergency contact at home that will also know where you're going to be each day in case you miss a check-in. So if a search and rescue team needs to be sent out, they know exactly which trail to hit first. And that will keep you safe in the long run in case the worst does happen. As your trip planning process is starting to come to its end, you want to make sure you know exactly which campground you're going to go to and how to make a reservation if that is needed. You're also going to want to have a backup in case the campground doesn't open in time because, I don't know, maybe there's a snowpack that kept it closed longer than normal. <laughs> and once you know that, again, make sure you know if you need a reservation and how to get that reservation. And if it's first come first serve, how they expect you to do that process because every campground is going to be a little bit different. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is make a gear list of absolutely everything you're going to need while you're on your trip and then go back and look through the usable gear that you have in your collection and check them off of that handy dandy little list you just made. Just make sure you double check you have a first aid kit for the campground and at least one to pop into a hiking bag for your group while you're on the trails. Once you know the gear you have and the gear you need, make a little meal plan because once you have an idea of the meals you want to make, making your grocery list is gonna be a much easier process and it will make sure you're packing enough calories to replenish the energy that you are using while you're hiking. And the last thing you wanna remember is have fun. This is your trip after all. And if you're not having fun, what's the point? Make it yours. All right guys, that's about what I have for you today. Make sure you like, subscribe, and if you have any tips, make sure you pop them down to the comments below. Maybe even consider ringing that bell. See you all next time.